America the beautiful, we must deal with the cities and the urban areas around them. This is where three quarters of us live. This is where the growth is. And here the problems are complex and crucial. This city could be New York, Los Angeles, Baltimore, or Louisville. It's more or less typical, asleep and half empty, waiting for the rush from the suburbs. This happens to be our fifth largest city, Midwestern and mighty Detroit. Nonetheless, to the somewhat harried commuter, entry into the center city is an inspiring moment, particularly after what he's seen along the way, if he cared to look. It looks beautiful, healthy, and secure. But taken in the overall context of the vast motorized American metropolis, its health is in doubt and its problems broken. These are the places that don't appear in the Chamber of Commerce brochures, only in newspaper headlines when they explode. Detroit's gray areas take up 24% of the city. Despite them, the city is prospering. Unemployment is down to 4% because of record automobile production. Race relations on the whole are good. And crime, though high, is high in the suburbs, too. But the trend is clear. The gray areas are spreading. The city's middle-class population getting smaller, and this is true of most American cities. William Slayton, Commissioner of the United States Urban Renewal Administration in Washington, D.C., says our urban crisis has three basic elements. Growth is foremost, preventing our growth from ravaging our land and our culture. Second is the blight of our inner cities. And third, the social renewal of the people who live in these blighted areas. When things get run down and ugly, social unrest and crime flourish. Watts, California, Harlem, New York, Cleveland, Chicago, Detroit, long, hot summers are nationwide. Off Woodward Avenue in downtown Detroit, the situation is bad. It's an integrated neighborhood with small hotels, churches, schools, warehouses, all kinds of civic institutions, and private residences. Get all, all his money on that one. Big Jack right here. Get it all on that one. Get every bit of it. The good citizens are afraid. The bad ones are fearless. A neighborhood improvement committee was formed to see if something couldn't be done. Detroit has made great strides in overcoming blight and decay. Its largest and proudest downtown housing renewal project is Lafayette Park, the first of its kind in the country. In 1950, the bulldozers came and pushed away 180 acres of the city's worst slums filled with rats, disease, and crime. It was 90% Negro. In 10 years, townhouses and high-rise apartments were built. The newest has rents to $550 a month with underground parking for two cars to an apartment. The buildings are all integrated. Negroes occupy about 8% of the new units. It's important, say the planners, to attract upper middle class families to keep the city from becoming a low income ghetto. The project has improved the skyline and raised the city's tax base by $25 million. Detroit has 22 urban renewal projects going on at a cost of about $10 million annually. But they say they need at least $25 million just to hold their own against the city's blight. Americans love our cars, and we prize the system that produces them. That system is having problems, and a lot of people think that to move ahead, we'll need a new economic model, a model that all of us can help to design. I'm Bill Moyers. The American auto industry is facing the greatest crisis in its history. Its very survival is at stake. The Chrysler Corporation, for example, on the verge of bankruptcy, has closed plants, cut its workforce, and pleaded for public funds all in a desperate effort to survive losses now approaching $2 billion. These days, none of our big cities could exist without enormous federal aid. In our mixed economy, the government also plays a crucial role in maintaining urban America, the corporate marketplace. Detroit now gets one half its annual budget from Washington. There are also other special considerations. Detroit is the home of the politically powerful United Auto Workers, and the auto industry does... The industry is changing its course belatedly. 
as it moves from making the more profitable gas guzzler to small fuel efficient cars. But it is also downsizing its workforce by putting in robots and computer controls and by building new plants overseas, everything to cut costs. Detroit finally began overhauling itself when the market here collapsed and foreign imports took almost a third of it. The big three then put some quarter of a million men and women on indefinite layoff and pushed. On the Detroit River, there is a city with a worldwide reputation for making automobiles. Motor City. Motown, Detroit, Ford, General Motors, Frankler. During the 20th century, Detroit, Michigan has built the automobiles that changed a nation. At Ford's River Rouge plant, cars begin as iron ore and roll off the assembly line as finished automobiles. Rising from the ashes of the 1967 riots, downtown Detroit has undergone a radical facelift. Appropriately named, the Renaissance Center is the core of this commercial comeback. Across the river from Detroit, Windsor, Ontario,